Good morning. I picked a dress with pockets just for this reason. <laughs> yeah, right there. I put it on my uh, uh, right side because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but if someone puts it over here or just down here, they have to like adjust it so that you can't hear the person's heartbeat. <laughs> and I promise you would hear my heartbeat. <laughs> Um, okay. Okay, so today's message is um, based on the verse Galatians 6 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Um, actually, when I first typed in that verse and, I, and um, um, I typed it in searching for, you know, some sort of parable or story, the first one that popped up was, I thought hilarious, Logan was like on the edge about it. So I'm going to start with that one. Two, two hunters came across a bear so big that they dropped their rifles and ran for cover. One man climbed a tree while the others hid in a nearby cave. The bear was in no hurry to eat, so it sat down between the cave and the tree, reflecting upon its good fortune. Suddenly, and for no apparent reason, the hunter in the cave came rushing out, almost ran into the waiting bear, hesitated, and then dashed back in again. The same thing happened a second time. When he emerged for the third time, his friend in the tree frantically called out, Woody, are you crazy? Stay in the cave until he leaves. I can't, panted Woody. There's another bear in there. <laughs> So sometimes we feel that there is nowhere to turn when we are in trouble. And in those times in life, God, that it is in those times in life that God expects us to not only turn to him, but also to lean on one another. I don't know how you're supposed to lean on your friend in this instance, but I thought it was a funny story. <laughs> Eat my friend. <laughs> um, and as a nod to uh, Pastor Allen, the Greek word for burden is barus, which means something that makes an overwhelming demand of sorrow or grief. In the Bible, two types of burdens are mentioned. The burden of the Lord in the Old Testament, a divine message from God to a prophet was called a burden. The prophet felt a sense of heaviness, urgency, and responsibility to speak to the people the words the Lord had given him. Today, we may feel a burden to pray for or help someone as the Spirit brings that person to mind, or we could be convicted to tell someone about Jesus Christ and the gospel. These are all ways God uses us to minister to fellow believers. He puts that burden on us. Or we have everyday burdens, and that's what we're talking about today. Those come in various forms, like financial problems, health issues, cause suddenly or ongoing burdens of lingering illness. Family relationships are big ones since they are, they are so personal and so precious. Troubles at work, emotional struggles, abuse, past regrets, sins, or the death of a loved one. They may make us feel burdened beyond what we can bear, but we are not meant to bear them alone. How many times have you heard the platitude, God won't give us more than we can handle? It gets used a lot. Many people use this line to try to encourage a friend or family members whenever times are tough. But we need to make sure that what we encourage them with is the truth. While this phrase sounds very positive and affirming, you will not find God won't give us more than you can handle in the Bible. A side note for those that might think otherwise, it does come close in 1 Corinthians 10.13. And I bet that's where the saying originated. That verse reads, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common, not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But that is not what we're talking about today. We're not talking about temptations. We're talking about burdens. We're talking about God's plan for us believers when life does give us more than we can handle. So does God give us more than we can handle? Yes. He does, all the time. 
And for proof of this, we, can only have to, we only have to look at the Bible. You see it constantly in almost every book, from Job to Jeremiah. I mean, have you read Limitations? <laughs> to Jesus and his disciples, the disciples had everything thrown at them. And even Paul shared some of his own experiences in 2 Corinthians with just nine verses. It included imprisonment, countless beatings, multiple shipwrecks, dangers in every environment and from all people, hun hunger, thirst, sleepless nights, and he was even left for dead. But Paul did not write these things to boast of his suffering. He did it so that we might know that God will often give us more than we can handle because those things show our dependency on God and on each other. Earlier in 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote about growing your dependency on God. For we do not want <clears throat> for we do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, of the affliction we experienced. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 9. Basically, he told the church, we were so afflicted that we thought we were going to die. We were burdened beyond our ability. We could not handle it. But God gave us this adversary and burden so that we would rely on him who can. We are not self-sufficient. We cannot hunker down and power through every situation. We cannot white-knuckle our way through trials. We need God, and we need our church family. Christians need to turn to God, yes, but they need each other almost as much. We hear the phrase, the hands and feet of Jesus and the body of Christ. And if you had to articulate that to someone, you might talk about outreach and missionaries, about showing others the light of God, the joys of service. But today, I'm emphasizing the strength we bring each other. Let's avoid being familiar strangers. I think I broke it. I totally broke it, Logan. It was a fun plan. <laughs> and instead of being familiar strangers, instead strive to be true brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> yeah. Logan, save me. <laughs> um, we have to be careful with that phrase. Brothers and sisters in Christ. It can be a cliche too. But hold in mind what it means to have siblings or even a very best friend that knows you. Knows you so well, you can't sugarcoat that embarrassing story from when you were, in thir when, from when you were 13. Someone that will call you out for making the same mistakes because they were there to see you make them before. That person that knows all your struggles and on your best days and on your worst days. These brothers and sisters in Christ don't judge you. They are there to celebrate the joyful moments and to lift you up when the burden is too much. We are all guilty of presenting a life far, far more solid and put together than it actually is when we are at church on Sunday. <clears throat> week after week, Christians from all over walk into churches, acting as though all is well. when in fact they may be barely holding it together because of any number of things. Marriage struggles, family conflict, financial challenges, job stress, health issues, addictive behaviors, or even just spiritual doubts. But we're Americans, we're strong. We insist on putting up a brave front. At the very least, let's just pretend that life is perfectly fine. And you know what, I'm not even judging that. Sometimes pretending around people is the only thing keeping you upright, just so long as you are leaning on someone, or five someones, or anyone. Just be aware enough of your own struggles to know they cannot be held alone on your shoulders. You might even need to go so far as to admit, admit that leaning on the strength of God's promises and mercies just isn't quite getting you through. We need each other to help carry the weight of these things. And it's simple, it is so simple. For example, I'm around preschoolers all the time. After nap, they have to put away these cots. And they aren't heavy, but they're big and they're awkward. They're not big to us, but they're big to three-year-olds. 
They're about two to three times bigger than they are. They fold their blankets and they tuck their pillows into the pockets on the cots, and then they turn to one or two of their other friends and they ask for help. So now you have three three-year-olds carrying these cumbersome cots to be put away. Now these kids have pride and they push for their independence and they want to show everyone around them that they are grown up, but they never hesitate to ask for help. That's just the kind of stupid habit us grown-ups picked up, and we seem to think it means something. But it is so simple. Just lean on your brothers and sisters. Ask for help. Galatians 6, 2 says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ mentioned is found in John 13, 34, where we read, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another even as I loved you. Sorry, it's beautiful and lovely, and I don't know why it makes me emotional. Um, <clears throat> love for God and love for your brothers and sisters is, in Christ, is fulfilling that law. So how can we love one another? The answer is in that verse. We need to help carry each other's burdens. It means that we have to help each other to deal with our problems and our difficulties. When we belong to the family of God, we do not need to deal with our struggles alone. We have each other to carry each other's burdens. To illustrate that point, I found a modern parable. In the Eastern Asian islands, typhoons regularly sweep through. The fierce winds and rains uproot many trees, including mango trees. I thought it was interesting that they felt the need to say that it included mango trees. So I looked it up, and the mango tree is comparable to the oak in its sturdiness. So we have these devastating tropical storms that wipe out the sturdiest tree, but always the narrow, brittle bamboo survives together. The reason the bamboo survived was that they were able to lean on each other. They were standing so close to each other that they were able to carry each other's burden in the storm. God desires for us as his children to lean on each other like bamboo. When the storms of life come, we need to rely on each other. It is so easy to hide our struggles from each other, but that is not the way God wants us to handle these storms. Because we are not meant to stand on our own, we need each other to make it through this life. So if we are struggling with something, we need to reach out to God first, and then we need to reach out to each other. As I finished this, I was looking for a song, and I typed in the verse, and this video popped up, and I thought it... Um, fit beautifully. It's actually from Our Daily Bread, the little booklets that we get. <laughs> Do you think I'm too far away? So I'm including it in the in the message. Share with you another way living courageously has manifested itself. And it's probably a way you would
which is exactly why the Apostle Paul commands us in Galatians 6 to carry each other's burdens, to walk with each other, to encourage, to love, help, and challenge each other, to remind each other of the truth. You don't have to be okay all the time. None of us are. But we feel this pressure to act like Let that stop with us. Vulnerability begets vulnerability. So find a safe person or persons. Lead the way, open up, be real, and stop trying to do it all alone because God did not create any of us to be able to do so. It's scary for sure, but the load of life, the load of parenting, the load of single parenting, the load of family drama, and whatever else you're walking through gets lighter when we bear those burdens. But here's the kicker. People can't carry burdens that they know nothing about. And you can't carry burdens that you don't know about. So the challenge for you and for me is to be the type of courageous people who seek to cultivate safe and authentic community. Terrifying, but so, so worth Did you know they did little videos? Our daily bread. So I didn't even see that video until after I was already done, and I thought it fit real nicely, and I hadn't even looked at it from that angle. Um, so God showed us a blueprint of this type of relationship. He knew that the sacrifice he was asking Jesus to make was unbearable. But he had a plan in place, a support system. The 12 disciples were there to help carry the weight, to be a support system for Jesus. Not a crutch, not to take over, not to fix the problem, but to just be there, to help carry and hold him up. Sure, they were there to learn and to teach, to grow the church, to spread the word. But just like our church family, they were there to shoulder the burden. Jesus modeled how to accept and even welcome gifts from his disciples. Churches are such deep wells of blessings. If we open ourselves to it, we need to bless others. And equally, we need to allow others to bless us. Blessings come from the most obvious, but also some of the most surprising places. <coughs> and how do we do this? This thing that is so easy to write down, but has so much vulnerability. Just the thought of sharing some of your burden makes us uncomfortable. First, we need trust. If we're going to bear each other's burdens, we have to have strong relationship of trust with each other. Always these conversations must be held in confidence. Others will share things with us that should not be shared unless they are given permission to. We must hold everything in confidence. We must have trust. We must be transparent. We have to be real with each other. In order to carry others' burdens, we must be transparent so others will feel safe to be transparent. We can't be the kind of person that is willing to and wants to bear another's burdens and then not be transparent ourselves. Remember, this one feels like a guy thing. You don't have to fix it. We, we, when we care for someone and want to help them bear their burden, we want to try to find the right words and we want to fix it. But so often there are no words. Most people just need you to be there to listen to them and lend support as they work through their burden. That you have knowledge of their burden is often enough, and being a calm in the storm is usually more important than any advice you might give. <clears throat> then, after establishing trust, transparency, and listening, there might be a need for practical action, a meal, a check, referral to counseling, or even becoming their advocate. And last, always rely on discernment. Ask God for direction, ask the person. Our first thought to help may not be what that person needs, but always pray. Bearing one another's burdens does not mean that you are taking that burden from them. You are just helping them shoulder it. 1 Peter 4, 8 and 10 says, Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. God has given each of you gifts from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. God is still God no matter what life looks like. If we allow the situation in our lives to dictate our relationship with him, then we are doomed from the get-go. Besides, he's not looking for wishy-washy followers. He's looking for those relentlessly seeking his guidance and stubbornly persistent in asking for his mercy to fill your life. Those who stay persistent in their faith will be persistent enough to persevere. But those who lose faith won't. 
they will turn back. They will hold their own counsel and harden their own hearts against God. Don't hold your own counsel. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, call out your friends if they try. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 19, it reads, Be unceasing and persistent in prayer in every situation, no matter what the circumstances. Be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to the workings and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Join in with others who are seeking God and encourage each other daily. Then you shall have the spiritual strength and persistent determination we need to grow in our faith. Ephesians 6.18 says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. I'm not saying to be obnoxious or annoying to your fellow sibling in Christ, but be obnoxious and annoying. Don't let them hide from you. Pray for them and be open to building that trusting relationship. Ezekiel 11, 19 through 20 says, I will give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart instead, so they will obey my laws and regulations. Then they will truly be my people and I will be their God. In conclusion, stay open to the changes God wants to make in your life be available with your whole heart to be used by God wherever and with whomever he puts in your life. Have the courage to stand shoulder to shoulder with your brothers and sisters so that you can stand with you can withstand any storm. So I'm going to close in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much that I belong to your family. I know every one of us has areas in our lives in which we are weighed down or discouraged, and possibly deeply burdened. I thank you that I do not have to bear these things alone. I thank you, God, for the grace and mercy you show us as we put our burdens at your feet. Please help me to love others exactly how they need. Please help me not to be afraid to reach out to others as I am struggling. Continue to guide me, and thank you for placing these incredible people in my life. I pray that you will use every speed bump from my life to turn into in turn help those who are struggling. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.